This video is about the formation of stars, from a nebula to a protostar, up to the start of the main sequence. All stars are born from a cloud of dust and gas called a nebula. The main components of a nebula are hydrogen and helium gas. Over time, the attractive force of gravity pulls the dust and gas together. This grouping of hydrogen and helium nuclei is called a protostar. So far, we have seen stage one of a star's life cycle, the nebula, and stage two, the protostar. Next, we'll take a look at the final stage in the process of forming a star. Over time, as more and more particles are attracted by strong gravitational forces, the mass of the protostar gradually increases which further increases the strength of the gravitational forces which attract more particles, until eventually the temperature and pressure in the centre of the star get high enough so that nuclear fusion can start. The high temperatures created by fusion produce an outward radiation pressure which exactly matches the inwards gravitational forces. This stage in the star's life cycle is called the main sequence. Once this happens, the star enters a long period of stability, as it continues to fuse hydrogen into helium for billions of years. After the protostar stage, the star becomes a main sequence or stable star. This is where the life cycles of stars of different masses start to divulge. Low mass stars, like our sun, are cooler in temperature and emit yellow or red light, whereas high mass stars are much hotter and emit blue or white light. Let's look at an example question. Our star, the Sun, is stable. Initially, the Sun was a protostar before it became a main sequence star. Then we have the command word explain for each part, meaning we need to write clearly, logically, and make coherent links within our answers and we can see that each part is worth two marks. Part A asks us to explain the conditions needed for the sun to remain stable. Recall that a main sequence star is stable because it balances the inwards gravitational forces with the outwards radiation pressure from fusion reactions. Note the underlined keywords here. These are essential to use to gain both of the marks. Part B asks us to explain the difference between a protostar and a main sequence star. A main sequence star is defined by its stability from fusion reactions, whereas a protostar can be defined by its lack of fusion reactions. So we can say a protostar is at a lower temperature or that it does not emit as much radiation due to the fact it is not hot enough yet for nuclear fusion reactions to take place. Part C asks us to explain how stars like the Sun were formed. For two marks, we just need to reference the initial cloud of dust and gas, which was pulled together by gravitational attraction, or forces. In summary, a nebula is the first stage in the life cycle of a star. A nebula is a cloud of dust and gas in which stars and planets are born. Hydrogen and helium start together under the attractive force of gravity. A protostar is the second stage in the life cycle. Gas and dust become more compressed as they collapse under gravity. Then, as the cloud collapses, its internal temperature rises. The main sequence is the third stage in the life cycle. This stage begins when nuclear fusion in the star's core begins. The inward gravitational force is now counteracted by an outward radiation pressure, which allows the star to remain stable for a long period of time. Don't forget to check out all of our other fantastic revision resources here at Save My Exams.